Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to look at how a 2080 Ti performs in DaVinci Resolve. In our last video, we tested a benchmark that I developed against a 2700X and a 1600 Ryzen processors. We saw a pretty significant difference between the 2700X and the 1600. You can check it out right above. Today we're going to use the same benchmark as well as some observations in timeline performance so that we can see what a 2080 Ti really looks like in DaVinci Resolve 16. And here we are with the 2080 Ti loaded up with my multi-OS benchmark. It's about 30 minutes worth of H.264 uh, footage shot either on the GH5 or on a DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone. The uh, footage that I've got, I color it. I've got some noise reduction in here. There's even some uh, heavier effects near the end, which can take a long time to, to process. And so I've used this in my rendering test, and now I'm going to use it here in our edit test so that you can see what it looks like to edit on a 2080 Ti. The first thing I need to do, though, is come clean. I tried to run the 2080 Ti last time I ran the benchmarks with the 2700X, but it would not physically fit in the case that that machine sits in. So I ordered an extension cable, and it's in uh, really elite mode at the moment, if you look at the footage here. Uh, got it hanging out the side of the case, and I ran some renders. Those renders didn't come back with the results I was hoping for. In fact, it showed that the 2080 Ti with the NVIDIA hardware encoder was about hmm, 10%, 5 to 10% slower than the 1070 was encoding using the same encoder for both H.264 and H.265 encoding. I don't know if the extension cable had something to do with that or if the machine was having a bad day. Uh, who knows? But I'm going to rerun that as well here on my Threadripper machine. And all of the view that you see here with the edit, that's coming off the Threadripper machine as well. With that, let's take a look at what it looks like when you're using a 2080 Ti here in Resolve. You'll notice I've got some pretty basic footage here. Uh, it's in a lower light, and what I'm doing is grabbing pans of Lexi here, trying to make sure it's on a gimbal, which you saw just dip into the frame. But more importantly, you can see that there is some noise in the footage, even though I'm using the GH5 plus the uh, 18-35 to 35 Sigma art lens that opens up to f1.8. So, of course, I'm going to put some noise reduction on that later let it create some more pain for this you know. and you'll notice every time that I'm playing here it picks it up and it plays it almost well pretty immediately uh, here's the same with some DJI encoded footage it's uh, running at 2997 this is 8-bit color off of that this is a trout stream this is the South Platte River in Colorado Here's some more of that. Um, you notice as I cut around and I hit space, it's going to play immediately. I mean, it's what you would hope for if you're going to spend this on a graphics card. So let's uh, zoom out and go find some more footage with some treatment to it. Uh, here we are. Oof. Yep, that's GH5 with some new puppies. Uh, they're hard to keep in frame when you're shooting at such a shallow depth of field. And gradient generator, here we go. So I show you this, you can see, uh, for one, you finally get to see what's in the basic color grading here. Um, you, you get to see what's in the benchmark. Here's one with an adjustment clump over the top of it. more color grading and you'll understand how it runs it's immediate in the timeline I can scrub I can do whatever I want it pops up and responds will note I, I have optimized media on it's not optimized and then off um, and then no render cache likewise in fusion if you jump into fusion now this is where you can create some pain <laughs> if you want to and with that for time, I'm going to use the templates that come 
uh, with Fusion, we'll go to the particle templates, we'll drop some bubbles in, and drop it to the out. And now if I try and play it and render it, it's going to take a second. It's got to think, but you can see now the bubbles are running. This is still pretty darn fast. So let's check MSI Afterburner. This is the software I use to monitor my processor and my graphics cards. You can see over my timeline here, I've been only averaging about 15% on my GP CPU, and I've been spiking the CPU whenever I get going on it. So if I play this with no Fusion Render Cache on, notice the graphics card jumps up to about 40-50% utilization. Processor still hangs down low. This is representative of the great work that's been done by Blackmagic Design to move into a higher throughput processor, that being the graphics card, when they can. If we were to take the bubbles out, and we jump over to add another effect, move that out of the way for the moment. Let's go with an, uh, ooh, Burning Engine sounds exciting. I haven't even seen this one. Let's just pop that up on two. Yeah, that's creating some pain. Whew. Okay, so we've been able to create some pain here. What's interesting is I think it was loading media because it didn't really kill the graphics or the CPU here. Now, the burning effect is pretty well, well done. Whoever created this, Black Magic, I suppose. Looks pretty cool, and it is dragging at a lower frame rate than maybe I would hope. But um, in terms of creating pain, doesn't seem to be doing that in the processor makes me really wonder what is it what is it doing and it it's possible it's just uh, the code in the way that the code works requires this amount of time without that much processing who knows now naturally of course and I get this comment a few times in every video <clears throat> if you were to turn on these caches so I'll turn on the fusion render cache you'll notice the green line start down here that means that as it's rendering this it's caching that caching means saving so it's saving it out to the side. The next time that I bring it back here, you'll notice all of a sudden it's running really fast because it's just replaying what it's already generated. All right. Overall, the user experience in timeline with 2080 Ti is about as good as you would expect. It's fantastic. You really can't get frustrated with it. Uh, in terms of waiting, you don't. There's not anything where you really have to sit back unless you get into an extremely complex fusion composition and it leverages the, the graphics card. But even here you can see this one, which is trying on, on the system. And it may be a good topic for another video. Ah, I see. So here we are. We've got the, the memory that's allocated right now. It looks like the max memory allocated is around 10 gigabytes. Um, in the graphics card, we have 11 gigabytes total, and it appears the memory textures are full, and so it's likely swapping and buffering back and forth to be able to fill out uh, the frames, which is throttling the graphics card and the CPU, and that's, that's our problem. Of course, now it's cached in render, and you can see it's flying back perfectly. Now let's jump over to some render results. <laughs> You can see even moving to the first gen Threadripper 1950X, the 2080 Ti doesn't smoke the 1070 even when it comes to NVIDIA hardware encoding. I think what you're paying for here is the better experience in timeline when you really have a lot of effects or say in Fusion where you saw it pick up very quickly, the 1070 isn't quite as snappy. That said, the 1070 was $200 on eBay and the 2080 Ti was 1150 at Newegg. So overall, I think you're looking at a great editing experience, but one that might be achieved with a, say, 2070 or the new 2070 Super. That's something that if I can get my hands on, I will test for you in a future video. Please do the things with the clicking, the liking, and the subscribing, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.